Hello and welcome to the following lesson on the inverse square law investigation, which is part of the AQA A-level nuclear physics topic. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at detailing the inverse square law experimentally. So if we've been successful and learned today, we should be able to explain why gamma radiation follows an inverse square law relationship, carry out an experiment to verify the inverse square law relationship, and finally experimentally verify the inverse square law relationship for gamma radiation, which links into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.8.1.2 alpha, beta and gamma radiation. So in the following investigation, you're going to determine and prove the inverse square law for gamma radiation. So the apparatus you would need will be a gamma source, for example, cobalt 60, tongs, a source holder, a clamp stand, a boss, a clamp, a Geiger and Muller tube suitable for gamma detection, a scaler, a stop clock and a meter ruler. So to carry out this investigation, you would set up a Geiger Muller tube or counter with the scaler in the classroom. You would then take a background count for a particular time and determine the background activity of the room. Now again, you must decide this time over which you take your background count. You then place a radioactive source of gamma radiation securely in a clamp stand. Then using a ruler, you place the Geiger Muller tube a distance away from the source. Again, you must decide the distance you place it away from the source. You would then turn on the scaler and with the aid of a stopwatch determine the count rate of the radioactive emissions from the source for a particular time. You then repeat this procedure for a number of times that you decide. You would then determine the mean count rate and the activity of the source. You would then calculate the corrected activity by subtracting the background activity from your measured activity of the source. You would then repeat the experiment for different distances from your radioactive source. But once again you must determine these distances so let's just have a look at what you've got to carry out the first thing you would need to do is set up a scaler with a Geiger Muller tube in a classroom now a scaler in Geiger Muller tube is a measuring device which counts the numbers of radioactive particles or emissions present in an area then the first thing you would do is record the background count for a particular time. You can then calculate your activity or count rate from this. So when the background count is taken, the radioactive source should not be in the area. This is done before the radioactive source is in the room as the radioactive source might contaminate an area. It's always extremely important you take your background count uh, before the source is placed in the room. Now you can calculate your activity or count rate by doing the equation of the count divided by the time. So you must decide the time taken for your background count. But what we tend to find is the longer the background count is measured for, the more reliable the result. Once this is done, you would get a clamp with a clamp stand. You would then place the Geiger Muller tube um, with a ruler directly underneath it to measure the distance. So it's very important you ensure the detector is aligned with the start of the measuring scale on the ruler, otherwise you would get a zero error on your results. You would then retrieve the sources and they're kept in a secure box. Now this box should be lead lined to prevent excess irradiation. Now inside the boxes, the sources are protected by lead. Now the lead here is what we call irradiated, not contaminated, because the radiation is only passing through through the lead, it's not having the nuclei actually coating the lead. You would then set up a clamp stand to secure the, secure the radioactive sources. Now, when you're um, handling the sources, only ever handle them with tongs because using tongs prevents contamination of the unstable nuclei from that particular radioactive source coating you or, an, or your clothes that you are wearing. You would then remove the secure lead casing. Now again, the lead is completely safe to handle because it's not being contaminated, only irradiated. Then using the tongs, you'd handle the radioactive source with care and you'd place the source in the secure holder as shown in this particular diagram. You'd then attach it to the clamp stand as shown here. You'd then securely secure your radioactive source in the clamp stand and the gamma source is then rotated to face your Geiger Muller counter. You then place the source in line with the Geiger Muller tube or counter so they've got 
to be directly aligned with each other. Again, ensuring that your Geiger Muller tube and your radioactive source are both directly underneath the measuring scale of the ruler. So then position your source and the detector a set distance away from each other. Once again, you must choose this particular distance. Then using a stopwatch, you would measure the count rate with the detector for a set time. You would then repeat this a number of times, calculate a mean, and then determine the activity by dividing your count by the time taken. Now in theory, the repeat should be taken for each value on order of 10 to the two times to reduce the random effect of the radioactive decay. But obviously in the time taken for a lesson, you don't have time to do this. So you've got to decide the time taken for the count rate and the number of repeats that you would take. Now to take a measurement on the scalar, you would flip the, ops the switch on the device, which will freeze the reading. Now this will increase the accuracy of your results as it will allow you to take the count at a particular time. You then record your results and then reset the device before use again. Now you then repeat the investigation for a set number of distances. Now remember, you must calculate the corrected activity for your radioactive source by subtracting the background activity from your measured activity. Please remember to have the gamma emitter in line with the Geiger Muller counter. Now when you're deciding the number of distances that you need to take your measurements for, you must decide the values and the number of distances you wish to take. Now a couple of things ensure you are always faced away from the source and are never directly facing it. This improves the safety of the investigation as it reduces excess of radiation and then ensure that you put the radioactive source in way immediately after you finish taking the readings to once again reduce the excess of radiation. Once you've got your experimental results you would draw a graph of these results. You place the corrected activity on the y-axis and the distance between the source and the detector on the x-axis and you will get a graph which looks something like this. So you should see that as the distance doubled the corrected count rate will drop to a quarter of its value so it supports the inverse square law of gamma, array, of gamma radiation. So to summarize what we've learned in today's lesson that the inverse square law for gamma radiation is equal to i is equal to k over x squared and we've looked at the experimental verification of the, of the inverse square law including an investigation of the inverse square law for gamma radiation. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we can explain why gamma radiation follows an inverse square relationship. We can carry out an experiment to verify the inverse square law relationship. And finally, we can experimentally verify the inverse square law for gamma radiation. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the inverse square law investigation for the nuclear physics topic of AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, have a lovely day.